Tonight at 6.30, we begin a new Bible study here at Southside in the Wilds Fellowship Hall, directly following our brown bag meal at 6 o'clock. Tonight we're going to be studying 1 John. We're calling this study Beloved, because of course, this is this term that John uses, he leans on over and over and over again in order to convey how much he loves this church and just how much nurturing they need. Let me set the stage for you. The book begins in the aftermath of what's akin to a big battle. There's rubble strewn all over the war zone. There's bodies left in the wake of what exactly has happened. Some folks are gone. Some are dejected. Others are wounded and aren't sure if they'll live. Yet others are left with huge questions. It's going to take a lot of rebuilding to rebound from this if at all. What occurred was a dispute between believers that was both theological and behavioral in nature. Now, in fact, I'm sure that some of you can imagine this. Even some of you have lived this. That is the brutality of a church split. Folks left, families gone. It's it's like a church divorce, isn't it? You see, some think that you're in the wrong, and yet you might feel that others are in the wrong, which leaves us with questions of how you might feel after something like this. And then also the questions of what do I even believe anymore? Was I right in this regard or in that regard? So this group that left the church in 1 John, those uh, that John talks about, those who departed from us, those who went out from us. We put together the context clues, and this is something that we'll talk about for weeks to come, as Paul and I will be co-teaching throughout the month of June. We find these little, these little crumbs that are littered all throughout the book of 1 John about what exactly was this, um, what were these false teachers teaching? What was the message that they were propagating? Well, one... They were teaching that Jesus hadn't actually come in the flesh. I think this is one of the more rewarding pieces that we will discuss in this class moving forward of why does it matter that we believe that Jesus truly came in the flesh, was truly human. Of course, this is something that was disputed, and it seems to come from a blending of Greek paganism with Christianity. And we're going to talk about what happens when we blend Christianity with what God has revealed to us in Scripture and through Jesus Christ. What happens when we blend that with something that might seem more palatable by cultural standards? Well, the false teachers in 1 John were also teaching that Jesus' death wasn't strictly necessary for the forgiveness of sins. We're going to talk about why it is necessary. And of course, the group also had claims of a unique experience of the Holy Spirit that is hard for those people in the pew, if you will, for the members of the church to confirm or deny. Is this true? Or what do we do with this? How do we compare this with what God's revealed to us in Scripture? Well, John gives us the criteria to evaluate because, of course, what we're going to find out is with this group, their lives didn't quite match up with their message. But here's the cool thing about 1 John. The book wasn't written to the, we might call them the secessionists, those who went out, those who left. It was written instead to those who stayed. It was a letter written to the churches, seemingly uh, the, the churches who were affected by this controversy. He uses these terms of dear friends, brothers, and children. This is how John writes to this church because He is helping them pick up the pieces, how to be family again. That's what this book is about. So 1 John is a message that affirms the church, that reminds them of who Jesus is, what it means to walk in the light, and of course, to love one another. What a better message for us to be talking about as a family here at Southside. We're going to talk about themes of Christian assurance, the role of the Spirit, Christian perfection, the meaning of fellowship, atonement, and Christology, and so much more. Tonight, we're going to talk about 1 John chapter 1 and the introduction to the book as well. How do we know what we know? We'll ask questions about what is the nature of Christian fellowship? Well, we have fellowship with one another and fellowship with God, and we'll talk about what role does confession play 
in those fellowships that we have. We're going to talk about the subject that we might call sinless perfectionism, a controversy that uh, seemed to be plaguing the church, or at least was propagated by the false teachers in 1 John. Uh, what role does sin have in the lives of Christians? And we're going to talk about that tonight, as well as now we're going to begin to scratch the surface about what 1 John reveals about the character of God and the nature of Jesus Christ. I'll read a short passage from 1 John chapter 1. I want to invite everyone to come tonight to our discussion if you're able to make it. We would love to have you here. If you can't make it tonight, we'll welcome you with open arms whenever you can here in the month of June. 1 John chapter 1, I'll read verses 5 through 7. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We'd love to have you here tonight as we go deeper into 1 John chapter 1. 